Welcome to my channel, All for Health with Jane. The Senzo Meiwa Meda trial continues. Family, we are almost at the end of a trial within a trial. This video is a continuation of Attorney Ramosepele's presentation of his closing arguments. Family, Advocate Ramosepele is, doing, is still doing very great. He's doing excellent in his presentation. You know, in his addresses of, of when he addresses the issue of not having pocketbooks by the police, he did that, you know, extremely well. Another thing that he addressed uh, on this video, it's uh, when he was talking about that the police, when they say the unit was disbanded, remember the cold units, the cold case unit police, they kept on saying their unit was disbanded, so some other information they do not have. His response was excellent. I loved the way he responded to this question. Family, let's listen to him. My Lord, you see, the issue with me is this. Mm. These are police officers. They are mandated in their furtherance of their duties because they attend several scenes per day. They are mandated to carry pocket books. All we hear is they are say so, they are bad deniers. I was not there, I did not assault him. Uh, we, we, we keep on hopping back, my lord, uh, to apartheid days whereby Police officers will also employ the same modus operandi. Whenever it comes to matters, all of them, the pocketbooks have grown legs. They are not to be found anywhere. So all the court relies on is the say-so, the ipsa dixit of those officers. Well, they said the unit was disbanded. And of course, even the alleged leader of that unit, Colonel Singh, Yes. came to say it's the same thing. My Lord, I know in SAPS, there's what's called SAP stores, SAP 6. Mm. Records are kept. These are state records. The unit can be disbanded. The records are not disbanded. Mm. Now, my Lord... But are you seriously alleging that if a policeman assaults a detainee, yes. he's going to write in his pocket book at half past six p.m., I assaulted Ratama Fatri in the that, pocket book. That, that was the answer that was given by accused number two. To now say, I'm asking yes, on, yes. The, on the probabilities. No, no, my lord. What, what I was <laughs> raising the issue of pocket books on is to say, the pocket will, will, will say, Ramasipili S on duty at 6 a.m., attending to scene quarter past 15, whatever, yeah, fine, fine, at this place. Fine. We don't have that. All we have is their bad denials and their say so, my lord. <laughs> now, the other issue, my lord, that uh, also perturbs me about the arrest of accused number one that I, I believe we need to address is the incommunicado detention of both accused one and two. Now, accused number one. My Lord, let me go back to this point. He's arrested on a J50 warrant, which is issued in terms of Section 43. The J50 warrant emanates from a Tendisa matter, 217 of 3-2019, which is the dealing in drugs or possessing in drugs. And the warrant is, 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 is issued almost six months before it was executed in December of 2019. Now, the police, according to Mokola, they embark on tracing the suspect that they do not find because the case was never placed on record because they need to establish and find the, uh, the forensic report. Now, miraculously, the warrant is executed on a Saturday, my lord, for that Tembisa matter. And I, I, I'll tell the court why it gives the police an advantage to execute that warrant on a Saturday. 
because the accused person cannot be taken to court. What, but what does the law regarding warrants say of arrest? If I'm arrested on a Tembisa matter, be it a Saturday or a Monday, if the court is out of working time, it's after three or after four, whatever the court time knocks off, I must be taken at the police station in Tembisa and be left there alone until I appear in court and the issue of the J50 is ventilated by the court that issued it. Yeah, you're correct, but you're not quite correct in terms of the law. Yes, sir. I've brought agent applications a million times. Yes, my lord. Of a guy like him being arrested. Yes. On a Saturday. Yes. Even on a Sunday. Yes. And you argue that there's no just cause. You sometimes succeed. Yes. So this statement blanket. Hey, when a person is arrested, he, 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 he can't be taken to court on a Saturday or Sunday. With minimum qualification, you are correct. Yes. But we all know there's what you call an agent application. And I know some five, maybe they ended it three years ago. People could apply for bail even after hours at the Johannesburg uh, Magistrates Court. You know that. It's still their position. Still there. Regarding Saturday certain, also. Regarding certain there offenses. are magistrates who are on stand, but anyway, you have heard me. Okay, my lord. Now, what I'm saying is, in terms of the J50 warrant, because this one was not an urgent one, yeah, he's yeah, been fine. sitting with the hands. No, I take your court. point. He was supposed to be taken at Tenbisa until that warrant is ventilated on the first by the court that issued it. And the warrant does not say, take him and gallivant with him and do whatever what you do with him. It's specific. Say, I listen. I think I listened to evidence which says accused number two and number one were sought by the police. Actually, through the aegis of the informers, for instance, according, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not prejudging anything. I'm listening. Accused number two was traced up to phase two, Rustenburg, Freedom Park. Yes. Even Mofora says accused number one was also being sought. I don't know, maybe I'm making a mistake. You can correct me, anybody. You just need so. Huh? That's the evidence I did. Accused number one was being sought with respect to the Tembisa matter. Yeah, let's continue. Yes. Now, my, 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 my submission, my lord, with respect to this issue of the J50, and I won't leave it lying, is, is that it is used, my lord, for... Strategically, like Mr. Mbou, yes. it was agreed. Yes. And, and there's a term for that in law, my lord, mm. where they say you've obtained that J350 for them ledges because you obtain it for the Tembisa matter, but when you arrest the accused, you don't ask him anything about the Tembisa matter. You start asking him about the Senze Meiwa murder case. So it was sought and, 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 and obtained for, 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 for malafide reasons. Nefarious reasons? Yes. That's Mr. Gomez-Rus language. But did you use that word? Yes. Yes, I listen when people talk. I, I, I would have thought it would be more of Mr. Munis's. No, no, no. I yes. remember he said various reasons. <laughs> Family, according to me, Attorney Ramos Sepele was well prepared. You know, he took things, a sequence, one thing following the other, the way he addressed them. And each and every point, you could hear that he is arguing with the state. Whatever he said, he gave reasons. Or why do I say this? Why do I say the statement must not be admitted? So he kept on, he made us, you know, uh, understand the reasons for, for not admitting the statement. So for me, uh, Ramos Sepili has scored a lot of uh, uh, points or a lot of marks if they were given marks, to be honest. Uh, uh, even though, you know, who Rata will always be Rata. Because he kept on disturbing Ramosepele. You know, he, he even forgot that he was supposed to keep quiet, listen to the arguments. I believe that at this state, at this point in moment, 
Rata was not supposed to give any comment. Rata was not supposed to correct a person if maybe this person, uh, uh, maybe he makes mistakes. He wasn't supposed to, supposed to do that, but he kept on correcting uh, uh, Ramosepili. He kept on reminding him some of the things, which is not fair according to me. He was supposed to keep quiet because this is a summary of the whole thing. This is a, a, a point where defense need to prove to the court that we are saying these people are innocent. So he was just supposed uh, he was supposed to keep quiet and wait until Ramosepil is done. He's going to be given his chance to sum up the whole thing, to finalize the case. And in that uh, 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 his presentation, in the final presentation by the judge, that's where he will tell us, or when are you were wrong when you say this, when are you were right when you say this. Not when a person is still presenting his case. So I think that's what I did not like about a judge Rata. But uh, Ramosepili stood very strong. Ramosepili was very strong throughout. You know, when Rata, uh, after Rata is corrected or maybe reminded him of anything, he went back to uh, uh, his points. And I, that's what I loved most about him today. Uh, let's hope that Rata has had this. At the end, we need to see justice prevailing. We need to, we need to see the real killers of um, Senzo Meiwa going behind bars. Family, thank you very much for watching this video to this point. Uh, like it before you leave. Subscribe for my channel if you haven't done so yet. I love you, family. Thank you. Bye.